Up to three tropical cyclones could form next week. Two of them will be significant land threats to the Australian continent. It's definitely getting busier in terms of tropical activity across Australia for your January 11th forecast update. Brought to you by Force 13 Australia, we have two potential tropical cyclones that could impact the Northern Territory, Western Australia, and also Queensland. And the third cyclone, which could get quite strong in the Southwest Indian Ocean, I'm going to be tracking all of that plus more in your latest forecast update. Before I go any further, I would like to say a massive thank you for 10,000 subscribers. We've had a tremendous run here over the past couple of years, and it's only been in the past month that we've really got ourselves going. So if you are brand new here, please do consider subscribing to add to that total. But if you'll be here before 10,000 subscribers, thank you so, so much. So here's a look at today's forecast. Um, you can see hot conditions across Australia's West Perth expecting a warm top of 34 degrees today, but that's nothing in comparison to what they're going to be getting over the course of the weekend. Storms across the north, which will be turning into rain and heavy rainfall at times across the Northern Territory, around Darwin and then down towards Catherine, and also some relatively heavy rainfall for the Cairns area. They could be seeing another 50 millimetres today. And then there's going to be the on and off shower or two, which could develop into rain across Byron Bay, Brisbane, the Gold Coast, and up towards the Sunshine Coast as well for the next two days. But apart from that, remaining pretty clear across the nation. So we've given that cyclone across the Western Australian waters a 50% chance of development in the next 10 days. And the cyclone in the Cape York Peninsula um, which could extend to the Coral Sea or the Gulf of Carpentaria, a 40% chance of development. That's up from 10% yesterday. We're getting more and more certain that that one is going to be the system to develop and become the warring system. But I'm going to get to that in the later part of this video. There's also a third system that's uh, north of the Cocos Keeling Islands, that um, giving a 20% chance of development, but it didn't fit on the map today. Uh, so we might see it tomorrow or so, depending on where that st uh, the storm moves. But let's take a look at rainfall for the Access G3 model. You can see storms across the north and those are going to be turning into rain as these cyclones start to develop and it takes it until about Sunday and into early Monday for us to first start to see these cyclones really start to develop. The first one to develop happens in the west around basically on the Northern Territory West Australian border right on the coastline actually before it moves inland and it becomes a weaker system there. It might get to category one status or so very briefly and then it's Thursday when we start to see that system develop in the Coral Sea just south of the Solomon Islands and Papua New Guinea actually and and that one too doesn't get too strong, but it becomes a category one, a uh, pretty solid category one before it boomerangs back and bounces into the Queensland coastline. So we'll be watching that very closely at around day 12 to day 13 because that could be an Australian cyclone impact. So now we're taking a look at temperature. You can see hot conditions above 42 degrees Celsius as highlighted in those pinks and above 38 in those reds. And they are very widespread across the nation. It is going to be a hot week, especially across the south and across the east. Uh, Perth expecting a top of 41 degrees Celsius on Saturday so very warm there but those cyclones up north should keep things cool for at least the tropics around the northern territory and wa border uh, as that cyclone moves down we could be seeing temperatures as low as 25 degrees celsius as a maximum up to 10 degrees below average and in one or two spots that could be a drop of 13 degrees on the average and also as that cyclone approaches the queensland coastline temperatures will dramatically drop there as well so that's interesting uh, and that's fairly typical with tropical cyclones as well now we're taking a look at winds to get a scope of how strong these cyclones can be uh, you can see Saturday and Sunday we first start to see that West Australian system develop, that's Tropical Low 03U. That one becomes a cyclone Monday morning, very briefly, a Category 1 strength system before it moves inland. Um, and as we zoom out, you can see all three of those systems. One of the Coral Sea, 04U, starts to develop. That gets to a very brief cyclone status. And then on about Wednesday, the uh, one in the uh, Indian Ocean, 05U becomes a Category 2, maybe even a Category 3 severe tropical cyclone by around Thursday. That's looking like it's going to be the strongest out of all three until about Friday, when it looks like maybe the Coral Sea one, as it bounces back towards Cairns, will have a shot at intensification, just like Jasper did. And we could be seeing a direct hit, um, maybe a about um, Hope Vale or so if I'm to extrapolate that model run forecast. So it's a concerning sign there and a signal that Cyclone Jasper might be back for vengeance in the form of another tropical cyclone. So just to look at the satellite imagery before I switch over and take a look at the forecast, you can see a lot of thunderstorm activity across the north and it looks like it's starting to spin itself up as well. So the cyclone is definitely inbound. 
All right, so just before we jump over into the forecast, I thought it necessary to talk about the rain and the radar situation up in the Northern Territory and West Australian Kimberley region. You can see thunderstorm activity already getting itself going as a result of these tropical cyclones. I'm surprised that at least the thunderstorm cloud over here, the really big gnarly one, that hasn't been invested yet, which means that the official agencies aren't monitoring it yet. And that does kind of surprise me considering um, just how persistent this thunderstorm activity has been. It in particular here, I guess it hasn't been a consistent burst of convection, but it's definitely something that I reckon the official agencies should be monitoring at this time and be giving more detailed forecasts on. But you can see very typical for tropical cyclone formation, a lot of uh, convective activity now streaming into the Gulf of Carpentaria, and that will start to wrap itself up as a result of that tropical low that's going to develop here embedded in that monsoon trough fairly soon. Um, but apart from that nationwide looking relatively clear, one or two thunderstorms in southwest and western Australia around the goldfields region, but nothing out of the ordinary for this time of the year, that's for sure. Now we're going to take a look at rainfall first. We'll start things off with the Eastern Rubio forecast because of its higher resolution, which means we get a greater understanding of the picture. You can see, at least over the next 24 hours, um, not too much of uh, that would cause great concern happens. There's a lot of thunderstorm activity that moves in ashore, keeping track of time on the bottom part of your screen. But about 7 p.m. tonight, we're looking at a lot of thunderstorm storm activity moving through uh, the northern parts of the Northern Territory and even into far north Queensland as well. We could be seeing a further 50 millimetres fall in a lot of locations here uh, tonight and into tomorrow. Now, this is consistent rainfall. This is widespread, uh, very uh, moderate to heavy rainfall it's not in the form of intense pulse thunderstorms from what I'm seeing here, which is uh, the sign that the tropical cyclone is definitely imminent and the monsoon trough is building up. You'll know uh, what the weather uh, means up in the Northern Territory considering how used you are to seeing uh, this sort of uh, stuff with the build up and so forth. But what I'm seeing here is definitely the start of a tropical low, which is always the start of a tropical cyclone. So we'll flick it over to the access model right now and take a look at what's in store for the next 10 days in terms of these tropical cyclones. And hopefully the models don't update on us <laughs> mid forecast once again as they did yesterday but you can see about Sunday and into Monday morning we start to see the cyclone undergo tropical cyclone genesis where it becomes a tropical cyclone Monday morning with peak winds of around 35 knots out of the west so it's a very weak category one strength cyclone in fact it might not even be a category one cyclone at this point because of the Bureau of Meteorology's gale force wind rule um, but yeah it does deepen 988 millibars as it moves towards the WA Northern Territory border so it's a strong uh, tropical tropical low at this point, if it, it still remains a tropical low, winds around the northern side would probably be approaching 40 knots at this point. So yeah, very, very uh, strong winds as well for a tropical low before it bounces back, moves further south by the looks of it. In fact, it, to be fair, it just stalls here um, towards the east of Lake Argyle for a couple of days before then after that, it moves back over the Northern Territory and it will probably terminally weaken there. But yeah, down to 982 millibars for a tropical low. That is a very, very low pressure indeed. And that means that there's going to be some very, very, very strong thunderstorms banding around it. Now, how is it holding this intensity while over land? Now, frequent viewers were probably sick of me uh, talking about the brown ocean effect, but the brown ocean effect is where the uh, storm drops so much rainfall uh, that there's uh, floods and inland seas that start to open up and that's how the cyclone can intensify uh, using the moisture that it's already dropped. And it's very frequent in the Northern Territory in Western Australia and it looks like Tropical Low 03U is going to have an absolute birthday party with the brown ocean effect. But yeah, it holds its pressure and it holds its intensity down to 980 millibars as it passes through Wave Hill. So it's a strengthening system as it gets uh, down there, uh, which is very, very interesting. It's not what we see every single day. This could be producing wind gusts up to 80 knots uh, in its more intense thunderstorms around the southern side. So uh, by Thursday and into Friday, this is a very strong uh, tropical low and a very dangerous weather uh, threat for uh, places down here, Wave Hill down to Twin Hills and around Balgo, Halls Creek and uh, through Kununurra and Windham. This is a serious threat uh, to locations in there and it doesn't take it until about Friday for it to really start weakening off. But yeah, it, it refuses to weaken until yeah next weekend. 
saying, that's a cyclone, that is, that's, that's ridiculous, I've never seen this before. So I think the Access G3 model can't really be trusted beyond sort of day six or day seven from what I'm seeing here, because this is a, this is a very much a once in a decade forecast. So I, I mean, it's in the realm of possibilities, but it's a ridiculous forecast, that's for sure. Uh, but a strengthening cyclone right into the deep heart of the Northern Territory as it approaches even Alice Springs, which could be receiving cyclonic winds by about Saturday or Sunday. So a lot of rainfall expected from this cyclone as it makes passage. And we'll take a look at that now. Over the next 10 days, up to 200 millimetres as you get deep into the Northern Territory, maybe 50 millimetres for Alice Springs. But the real rainfall remains on the Northern Territory coastline, where this cyclone is just going to be churning in rainfall from the Timor Sea right onto Darwin and anywhere down towards Wyndham and Kununurra, actually. And these uh, pink areas, more than 400 millimetres. The light pink areas, more than 800 millimetres. Darwin itself expecting up to a metre of rainfall from this cyclone. But this uh, bright area is up to two metres of rainfall, two and a half metres of rainfall, in fact, in one or two spots as well. Uh, thankfully, this is um, over the water, so you can't really get too much in the way of flooding here. But if this was to get itself over, this sort of flooding to get itself over like Drysdale River or something, or the Fitzroy River, uh, which is very unlikely considering it'd have to move itself to about here, you would be seeing once in a lifetime flooding. I mean, two and a half meters of rainfall is, in for some of these locations, three years worth of rainfall. Uh, it's ridiculous, ridiculous quantities of rainfall um, that I've never seen before on a forecast model. So that is just absolutely absurd. So that's for sure. Thankfully, though, the access is notoriously unreliable in terms of rainfall. But even if you cut this total by half, you're still looking at up to 1500 millimeters of rainfall, which is totally in the realms of possibility and still beyond a meter of rainfall possible with a slow motion of this cyclone as far south as Wave Hill. So there's going to be a lot of flooding in the Northern Territory as a result of this cyclone. That's pretty much guaranteed. But yeah, that's basically enough on, what is it, Tropical Low Zero Through You. I'm going to now take over and take a look at the Coral Sea system because this one's also caught my eye. Initially, the models were expecting the cyclone to form around here, south of Groot Island, and then move up to about Nullumbai and make a significant landfall there. But we're now expecting the cyclone to move through the Gulf of Carpentaria and then spin itself up, or the Tropical Low at least will move through the Gulf of Carpentaria, and then it will spin itself up south of Port Moresby and Papua New Guinea and becomes a cyclone probably Probably about Wednesday evening into Thursday morning. Yeah, about Thursday morning is when we see this pick up the name of, I would believe, Lincoln. I could go out on a limb and say Lincoln, but considering there's three tropical cyclones, we'll get the K name, which is Kiralee, we'll get the L name, which is Lincoln, and then the M name, which I have actually forgotten. I'll check that right now. And then we'll pick up the M name of Megan. So there's three possible tropical cyclones here, three possible names of these cyclones to get, and I'll get to the last system in a little bit. Uh, but yeah, it, it, I can't really be pre-naming these systems considering it's still very uncertain and it just really matters on when these cyclones form as to what name they get. But as you can see, as we take it down to about Thursday and into Friday and then into Saturday, this cyclone lines itself up for a direct hit down towards Cooktown or Cairns. Now, thankfully, this looks like a very weak tropical cyclone and it looks like it's been ripped apart by wind shear and dry air. So it's still a category one strength system, but it's not going to have the rainfall and the moisture that Cyclone Jasper had, which is very good news indeed. I'm really not seeing too much rainfall in here to be worried about. This storm might dump maybe 200 millimeters of rain, which to be honest for Cairns is a drop in the ocean um, in terms of how much rainfall that they can receive on a weekly basis, even as we saw with Cyclone Jasper. So this is not looking like a massive threat to Queensland. So even though that the forecast is quite concerning in terms of a direct hit north of Cairns, I would not be fretting over it. I would not be worrying about it. And I wouldn't really even be bothering preparing for it until maybe about next week, mid next week, when we'll get a better idea of what the forecast is. Now, before I jump over to the last and the strongest cyclone, I would just like to briefly talk about how much rainfall is possible in southeast Queensland and northeastern New South Wales, because they're going to get another rainfall event. And I thought while we're on Queensland, we might as well talk about Queensland. But you can see a substantial amount of rainfall for some parts of Queensland, up to 250 millimetres around Byron Bay. And then there's other locations locations that might pick up 100 millimeters or 150 millimeters. But again, under the right band, you could be seeing locations pick up 100 millimeters in two hours, and that could drive rainfall totals beyond the 200 millimeters and therefore cause flooding. But apart from that, nothing else too interesting to talk about in terms of Australian weather. It is now time to talk about this cyclone over here, uh, which is being supported by most forecast models, actually. The ECMWF model forecasting it now, and the ECMWF model has been really slack on tropical cyclones so far this year. Uh, 
But the access model is the one that really pumps this system up. So it takes it till about Sunday to get its organized tropical low ready. And then it's about Tuesday or Wednesday that we start to see this system pick up tropical cyclone status, Wednesday morning maybe actually. And then it starts a brief period of rapid intensification. And yeah, it approaches category three status, 55 knot winds out of the Northwest. We could be looking at a cyclone approaching high end category two status, maybe even category three status as it passes actually right over West Island on the Cocos Island. So this is a cyclone threat to that location there, delivering cyclone conditions to West Island on Thursday. So if you're in the Cocos Islands, be watching this forecast very closely because this is a new system on our radar and it's a concerning system as well, considering it's close passage there and it's strengthening motion. Now, it, you can see here on this forecast, it starts to line up Australia in terms of a landfall. And now if I was to extrapolate this, it'd take it another maybe three or four days to attain a landfall on sort of Western Australia or the WA coastline. However, what's going to stop it is wind shear. Because of this tropical cyclone here over the Northern Territory, it's going to be in an, in an environment of very high wind shear um, through the WA coastline of around 40 knots. So if it is to get anywhere near the West Australian coastline, you're going to be, it's going to really, really struggle. And it will be on a certain terminal weakening trend as it approaches the WA co uh, coastline and waters. And I mean, absolute worst case scenario, it's just a bunch of clouds streaming into Western Australia. So we're not looking out for a major tropical cyclone landfall in Western Australia. However, what I would like to say is if a cyclone is to form over uh, sort of the WA waters and head for Western Australia, uh, in an environment with high humidity and very low mid-level wind shear, uh, high level wind shear, then uh, I mean, there's absolutely nothing stopping the cyclone because sea surface temperatures are through the roof. There's jet fuel conditions for tropical cyclones that approach Western Australia. So it's a concerning setup that we have for locations between Broome and Carnarvon, where we've got sky high sea surface temperatures and not too much in the way of tropical cyclones. So uh, if a big one does come on the forecast, you bet we'll be tracking it very closely because it will be a concerning threat that's for sure but anyway that is the latest that i have on the tropical cyclone situation the weather situation for australia thank you so much for 10,000 subscribers your support really does mean a lot and we're not stopping at 10,000. we want to get to 100,000. so if you want to be a part of the journey please do consider subscribing it's been great having your company and i'll catch you all in the next storm goodbye thank you for watching our content this update if you enjoyed it be sure to subscribe to get more updates covering all things weather and geophysics impacting australia and the oceania region Subscribe to our other channels for more content from across the network and be sure to check out our website where you can find free access to floater and radar imagery and articles on everything weather and much more. If you wish to support us directly, you can purchase some of our merchandise. We have a wide variety of clothing and homeware, or you could become an ultimate fan, which is the best way to directly support us, granting you some sweet perks and offers, including features in our custom storm animations, live streams, and much more. <laughs>